Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So I have to re-record this video because I made a gigantic mistake in this video that um, I have to be honest with you guys about. The, the sad thing is that I was going on a ski vacation with my family and this was the last video that I made late in the evening and I did some research and I was very happy with the numbers that I found and then very cockily in the video I said yeah and if you guys disagree with me honestly just let me know in the comments and <laughs> you guys made some really good points in the comments and I saw that oh my calculation was wrong uh, and then I didn't have a chance to correct it so I had to take the video down and wait it out and this is my correction video and the main theory of the video still sort of stands it's just not as good as i originally thought so thank you for pointing out this mistake and if you want to see more videos that are not hype down to earth and honest about palantir make sure you press the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos so the point of the video was that Palantir is hiding how well they are doing and we got a very scary net dollar retention on the last earning. What does it mean? It means that if a customer was spending $1 million with them in 2021 and then in 2022 that same customer was spending $1.2 million, then Palantir had a 120% net dollar retention per customer. So this is a... Uh, very informative thing for investors because as long as the number is over 100%, it basically means that the company is expanding even without sales and it shows a very, um, very strong product market uh, fit and it's just a very, very good indicator. So we as investors want to see that number uh, going up and it has not been going up with Palantir, but there is a very slightly good It's not as good as I first thought, but there is an okay uh, Explanation on this and the number is still not bad. So and I had a conspiracy theory about Why I think Palantir is not communicating uh, their true numbers and That is because I read Peter Thiel's book uh, Zero to one he is one of the co-founders of Palantir. He is one of the best investors of our age. He was uh, an early investor in Facebook, PayPal, obviously Palantir, um, SpaceX, and many, many, I, I think Uber, Uber also. Anyways, many, many companies that are very, very big. And his main point in the book was that you don't want competition. You want to own companies like Google, uh, that doesn't really have any uh, competition and that's a good business and Palantir has been very very vague about what they're doing how they're doing it and I think that this is partially to not create competition and this is a very wise strategy right it's annoying as an investor but it is a very wise uh, strategy so I look through the net dollar retention numbers uh, which should worry you because it is going down. And then I found that they are not communicating something. Again, this is a bit too strong language now, knowing what I know, correcting my mistake, but it's gonna come so you will understand. Um, and the thing is that for you as an investor to truly understand Palantir, you need to study hundreds of hours um, of the stock, of, you know, of their products, and you need to watch videos like this channel. And I believe that this is a strange situation, but a very good uh, situation for investors like you and me, because this is why the stock is six to eight dollars, because people don't fully understand uh, what Palantir does and how they work. By the way, I did a very, very good uh, video on understanding Palantir's business model. I will link it here uh, if you want to watch that. It's a crazy good video. One of the best videos I believe I've done on this channel. So currently Palantir is only for the smart investors, only for people like you and me who can, you know, put in the time uh, and study the company and truly understand what is going on. So this is the net dollar retention numbers per quarter that you can see in Q1 2022, they were reporting 124% and then Q2 119 and then 119 in Q3. And then in, uh, in all the financial year 2022, they reported 115%. So that is not a good number. I mean, okay, it's a good number, but it's not good that it's trending down. Uh, however, 
there are growing customers and this is a very very good thing uh, so the question is is this is the net dollar retention something to worry about and you know i really really thought it was something okay and i had to think and i had to look through their numbers many many times over and then i found something uh the average revenue per top 20 customer went from 44 million to 49 million. So if you times 49 million with 20, that is the top 20 customers, then you get 1 billion, almost 1 billion dollars, right? That is half or more than half of all the earnings of Palantir, all the total income of Palantir. So we know that Palantir's origins come from the government and the only reason why they were able to build out the company because the military and some government offices were willing to stick with Palantir and pay why they were able to develop this technology. But let me ask you a question. What is the chance that a company or an entity that is paying 49 million and has scaled all the way to 49 million, imagine that these contracts were probably 10 million and they said, we really like Palantir. Okay, let's expand with them, 15 million. And then, okay, let's expand with them again, 20 million per year. And now they, now they went from this to $49 million a year. I don't think that, you know, these relationships are probably very, very mature. And I don't see that this is going to blow up and expand. So that means that the net dollar retention or the, the expansion of Panther needs to come from the rest of the company, which is a smaller number. So that means that you have this more than 51%, which is going to be very slow. And this can suppress the growth that you see on the other 50%. And then the company can casually hide this and not talk about this. And only smart investors like you and me will, will understand. So this is where I made the catastrophic mistake in the last video. Uh, so I counted out this is Palantir total earnings, 1.9 million in 2022. You can see it went to this 1.9 from 1.5 in 2021. And I did was digging through the reports and the top 20 customers uh, was responsible for 880 million in 2021 and 980 million in 2022. So if you look as a percentage of the total income, then this was 57% in 2021 and 51% in 2022. So we want this to obviously go down and we want Palantir to have new customers because as I said, they can't really expand with these customers. So then I calculated the net dollar retention on these clients and it was 111%, which was below the 115%. And this is where I made the catastrophic mistake because then I looked at, okay, what did the non top 20 customers bring in, in 2021 and then in 2022? And you can see that it's a huge jump. So it went from 661 to $925 million. And they went from being almost 43 to almost 49% of the total income of Palantir. And then I shot myself in the foot with this one. Then I did the same and I calculated out that this is 139% uh, net dollar retention. And as you guys pointed it out, this is completely wrong because this only represents uh, the growth in the top non top 20 customers. And there is new customers in this and there's a lot of new customers in this. So I, was then when I found this mistake out, I did a lot of digging to find out if I can get out the net dollar retention, uh, if they would give enough data. And to be honest, I got very annoyed at Palantir because I was going through the yearly reports and there's so much change in the data that they report from quarter to quarter to quarter. They're not reporting the same data. And it, it's so annoying that it was basically impossible for me to find what the net dollar uh, retention is on the non top 20 customers. This is obviously a really, really important data. And it's probably still a very high number. And let me tell you why. It's because uh, the new customers at Palantir, they bring very little income in the beginning. Probably in the first one to two years, they even cost money to uh, Palantir. And Palantir makes money on 
serving these customers, making them happy, proving the value, and then expanding with these customers. That's where the real money and the real margins uh, come in for Palantir. So probably they added, uh, we saw the customer numbers, let's say they added 30 customers, and let's say that the average contract was $2 million. This is the problem that I have no way of telling this, right? So it could be that uh, this number is still insanely high, uh, because if you just take out, uh, you know, 30 customers times 2 million, that, that would be 60 million. So you still have a 120 something percent jump uh, and a net dollar uh, retention. But again, from the reports that they give us, it's impossible to see. However, these, this number is still probably very, very high. And it's really not possible that Palantir is going to grow more from the top 20. I mean, they are probably going to grow and that is a very, very good sign, but the growth that we want as investors is not going to come from the top 20 customer It's going to come from this segment. And this segment is going, growing very, very nicely. And unfortunately Palantir doesn't present this to investors. And I do believe it is because they don't want to create competition to themselves because if, uh, they would go out and truly share how well they are doing. The other boards like C3 AI, Snowflake would go like, why aren't we doing exactly what Palantir is doing? And remember that Palantir's package that they're, that they're offering is five to six years. That's according to CodeStrap. Uh, that is according to CEO Alex Garp, it's five to six years to develop, right? So the sooner that, or the later that these companies realize, hold on, we should be this, doing the same thing as Palantir, the better it is for us as investors because then Palantir is more ahead, has a bigger market share. And I think that this is why Palantir is so vague in their language. And it's very annoying as an investor, but if you do a little bit of digging, this is what you will find. So. I hope I corrected myself and I hope not a lot of people watched that first video. As soon as I realized the mistake, I took it off the internet. Uh, so it's not there anymore. Anyways, let me know what you think. Of course, if I made a mistake again, please let me know in the comments. Just be gentle. It's I make these videos late at night and sometimes my brain is not straight at that time. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you check out the Patreon for exclusive content and direct access to me and to my Palantir price targets. And make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.